Hi class, just wanted to make another video uh, discussing the basics of transistors. Uh, these are confusing little devices but are very handy. Um, a transistor is basically a switch where you can use um, one electric current to turn on or off another electric current. Uh, for example, the water analogy is imagine you have a pipe um, where you have a large amount of flow uh, that you want to transfer vertically uh, down this pipe, but uh, you want to control that with another liquid. And so perhaps we have, let's say, let's do a color here, a gate that pivots right here. Okay, now, um, as you can see right now, if we had uh, liquid uh, here ready to be transferred, uh, it, right now, as it looks, it looks like it's blocked. Uh, a way we can allow this to open is if we pass, uh, using um, uh, pressure liquid, push on this uh, gate, and doing so will make that gate pivot such that So now if we pivot it, now our gate has allowed uh, the water to, this small amount of fluid will open the gate and allow this uh, to flow, while the large amount of fluid, all this, will begin to flow. And so it's kind of like uh, using a small amount of current to control a large amount of current. Um, so a transistor is very similar. We have an input uh, we call our base and our output we can call an emitter and the large current is going to come through a collector. So um, what this does is a base, we, if we have a large current that we want to control to switch on and off, we can control that with a small uh, current through the base. And um, the different regions or the amount of current that flows uh, from the collector uh, depends on a couple of things. So first of all, um, let's say we uh, let's give this uh, collector, we have some sort of um, collector voltage. Okay, perhaps maybe this is actually um, a motor that we're going to drive with the collector. And we want to turn on and off that motor using some sort of input voltage through the base with some resistance, our base resistance. So this voltage, in maybe it's a, it could be anything that's greater than or equal to zero, let's say. And so if it's zero, the floodgate's turned off, and the current from the collector will be off, and we won't get any current. And if we turn on the voltage V in enough, it'll open up the gate and allow the current to flow from the collector and turn on the motor. Okay. Now, the amount of current that we can get depends on a couple things. So, let me make a plot here. Depending on the amount of input voltage, we can get different amounts of current. Now, first of all, just like diodes, remember diodes have forward voltages. Uh, they, uh, this V in value uh, if it's zero, we won't, we're not going to get anything moving, right? There's not going to be any current flowing. But like uh, any typical diode, transistors are made of really uh, kind of two diodes put together. And a diode has a forward voltage typically of uh, 0.7 volts it will consume as you travel current through it. And so similarly, the, the base of a transistor also has a forward voltage. And so until we reach that forward voltage, maybe it's about 
uh, 0.7 volts, let's say, it can vary, nothing's going to happen because it's going to need at least more than 0.7 to turn on that base. But once it does, there's uh, we turn it on, our, we're going to start to allow current to flow through the collector, and which will turn on the motor. And theoretically, this could go forever. However, the collector current is also limited by whatever it's attached to, and it'll eventually level off or uh, actually become saturated. If I could write correctly with my funny pen. Um, so there's there's two regions for how much current can follow. There's a linear region where the collector current is proportional to some uh, beta times the amount of current going through the base and there's some saturated current. So this beta IB, what that is, is um, if I have V in greater than zero and some voltage here that's called because this is the emitter and if the emitter is attached to ground then this voltage difference is the voltage from our uh, base to our emitter. I can't write very small with this. Um, the the current traveling through or into the base is just the current traveling through our resistor. And so using Ohm's law, IB is going to be equal to that voltage difference, so V in minus V B E over that resistance R B. And a trans transistor will be proportional to that based on beta. Beta could be 10 for small uh, transistors or 100 for power transistors, for example. So if we get um, 1 milliamp to travel through just the base, then we can get um, 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps to travel through the motor. And so we can get a lot more current uh, to travel from the collector. And that's, that's a linear region. The, and the higher the voltage we produce uh, in VN, the more IB, which will mean more IC, or collector current, that will travel. But we get to a point where it doesn't follow this linear uh, line anymore. It'll saturate. And the saturation, what that's from, is because whatever the collector current is attached to, for example, here in this case, if we have some collector voltage and um, our difference V, B, or V, C, E, yeah, that's horrible. Let's erase that. Try one more time. V, C, E. Uh, the, the current that's traveling through that resistor, R, C, is V, C minus V, C, E over RC, so it's just Ohm's law, V equals IR, rearranged. Now, because there's a resistance, I can't put any amount of current that I want to through that resistor. It's limited by the resistance. And so this motor also will have its own internal resistance. So we can put a lot of current through it, but not an infinite amount. It's going to be limited. And it's good that it's limited, otherwise you get a lot of heat. And so Whatever that saturated current is, that's what it's going to uh, kind of top out as. And so we have this off region, then we have a linear region, and then we have a saturated region. So those are the regions that we can operate a transistor in. Okay, um, This point right here at which it transitions is called the saturation voltage and sometimes we want to know the minimum saturation voltage because it's good to operate in this region because we know what it is and it's uh, consistent and so we want to know well what input voltage do I need in order to saturate the transistor instead of operating in this linear region and the notes discuss uh, methods of calculating that but all that is is just alright if we calculate a V saturation minimum to be 2 volts and V in is actually 5 volts, then we know we're going to be in the saturation region, and we can calculate Vc as that delta V over the resistance at the collector. 
Okay, so I hope this explains a little bit about the operation of a transistor. Um, if you have any other ideas or things that are confusing, please let me know, and I can try to post videos on that as well. Thanks.